I'm not trying to discredit Marco Antonio Rubio or just to get straight into the video, it is um, 555 Eastern Standard Time, August the 15th, 2014. Marco Antonio Rubio tweeted that he's going to be fighting Gennady Gennadyevich Golovkin, the WBA 160 pound champion, October the 18th, 2014. So, we know Golovkin's last fight was against Daniel Gill, then against um, Oshumanyu Adama, Curtis Stevens. Gabriel Zato, you know, Noshihiro, but, uh, uh, Noshihiro, um, I forgot how to say his name, Nobu, Nobuhiro Ashida, if, that, if I'm correct, you know, it's, Golovkin gets a lot of beef because he won't move up to 168 to fight Andre Ward, Andre Ward can't fight nobody, period, so just take his name out of the Golovkin sweepstakes, period. Sam Solomon, who is the uh, IBF 160-pound champion, is taking on Jermaine Taylor. Yes, that Jermaine Taylor is getting a title shot. So, first, after Daniel Gill, after Golovkin stopped Gill, Gill right now, Daniel Gill is, is the best name on Golovkin's resume, in my opinion, outside of uh, Gabriel Rosado. And then, you know, um, who else? Curtis Stevens, Matthew uh, Macklin. But what I'm trying to say is fans at this point in time, they want more. We understand what, what Golovkin is trying to do. For example, Marco Antonio Rubio is the number one contender for the WBC title that Miguel Cotto now holds, the 160-pound title. At one point in time, the Cotto versus Martinez deal almost broke down. So Sergio Martinez was going to fight Marco Antonio Rubio in Argentina in front of a big crowd, which at this point in time, maybe he should have done. But then again, Rubio has 51 knockouts. Let's look at his most notable fights. Baldemir, you know, that's, might as well not even count him. Kelly Pavlik, which he lost. Kasim Omo, Julio Chilo and Cesar Chavez, which he lost. But a very big win over um, David Lemieux. The reborn somewhat David Lemieux, who got that vicious knockout over um, Fernando Guerrero. Um, but right now, it's a situation where Golovkin needs a big fight. Now, you got Carl Frotch out there at 168 pounds. HBO has been baiting that fight. You know, the media has been baiting that fight. Carl Frotch wants to be on American television. Carl Frotch wants to fight on American pay-per-view in Las Vegas. Will Golovkin get him that? No, but will it be a good fight for the fans? Yeah, will it be money in it? Depending on if it's overseas or not. I don't know about in the United States, especially after um, Golovkin versus Gill didn't do... From what I understand, they didn't do as well as they as well as they expected it to do. But it was it was a solid crowd for the Madison Square Garden, the big arena, not the little room, but still, you know, bringing Carl Frotch over here for that. I don't know if he wants to take that risk. And it's not about he's scared of Golovkin. He's not scared of anyone. And in fact, to be honest with you, I think I'm going to say right here, right now, before anyone says anything, Carl Frotch at 168 with the feet Gennady Golovkin. He has eight. He has eight no punches or four anyone the caliber of Carl Frotch at 160. Period. You know, so 168. Yeah, right. You know, let's just get that talk. But that's just my opinion. You can think what you want. I'm sure you're going to think, oh, T Street, you're stupid. Don't try to. Don't try to change my opinion. It's my opinion if I think Carl Frotch is going to win. If you think, I mean, if you think Golovkin's going to knock him out, hey, go ahead. But to each his own. I look at it like this, Golovkin needs a big fight, and right now it's looking like you're fighting, you're fighting, um, thirsty. you're fighting Marco Antonio Rubio on October the 18th, fans pretty much feel like, well, he's never going to fight Cotto, Cotto's not going to take that risk, Cotto is the 160 pound champion, but Cotto's not going to take the risk of going up against a guy like Golovkin, you know, and Cotto's not fighting at the full 160 pounds. Now, if Golovkin wants to come down to like 155 or 156 or 156.7 or some old crazy catch weight that um, Freddie Roach and Bob Graham and all those guys are going to come up with, then, you know, I'm sure the fight can happen. But right now, Golovkin has goals, as he said. One of the reasons why he won't move up to 168 to fight Andre Ward, which can happen, is that he wants to capture all the belts at 160 pounds. So you got Sam Solomon. You know, versus uh, Jermaine Taylor, whoever wins with that, you know, he can fight that person. You know, and that'll be a credible fight. We're talking about early 2015. You got uh, Peter Quillen, you know, who's got a mandatory coming up with uh, 
Matt Korobov, you know, ordered by the WBO, and, and Korobov is with top rank, and Quillen is with um, Showtime, so that's most likely going to go to a purse bid. So you got Matt Van Korobov, Korobov, you got Peter Quillen, you got Sam Solomon, you got Jermaine Taylor, and you got Miguel Cotto, and whoever Miguel Cotto is going to defend his 160-pound title to sometime this uh, this winter, it, even if he's fighting at 160. So it looks like 2015 is going to be another one of those years, unless you know Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. can be made again at 168. You know, or 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 like I said, I can't, can't even talk about we can't even talk about um. We can't even talk about Andre Ward. There's not even point mentioning it, like him and fighting anyone in any way, shape, or form. So I'm not gonna sit here and waste my time on it. But if you don't know, this is T Street Controversy, T Street Controversy Live. I've always heard that I do my best videos like real late at night. Well now it's 6 or 1 a.m. so it's real <coughs> early in the morning. But if you don't know, I cover every single major fight live. I do video articles. Might as well call it that. I do video articles. I do a lot of research. There's a lot of talking and everything, and, there, and there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes to produce these videos. These videos are actually the um, the easy part. So I'm going to get back to watching some um, Jim Belushi, John Belushi, John Belushi documentaries. Of cocaine and heroin. He's been injecting. Two Street controversy. Two Street controversy. Right? <laughs>